Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Come out into the Derbyshire Peak District today, literally just to play with the 12 40 Pro 2 lens from our own system. Um, we've decided to uh, head out being like, it's quite a bright day, very harsh conditions, but I don't really mind that, you can really sort of get some interesting effects, especially if you can play with the exposure. Uh, but we've spotted this scene behind us, lovely old uh, sort of farm building with a tree sort of growing alongside it. Let's see what can line up. Obviously everything's handheld today, not doing the tripod, so let's have a look at what we can find. So the scene that we're looking at, we've got the old farm building, the tree alongside it, it's sort of curving over it, sort of giving it quite a nice bit of frame. I wonder, I'm getting quite low, because literally all I want is the bottom third to be the grass, then the house and the tree, and the upper two thirds with some of the clouds. Now because the clouds are actually quite nice, what I've done, I've actually dropped that into the, uh, the right hand third as well. So I'm really using the rule of thirds for this one, but it seems to work really nicely. But taking the shot, I've got an F11 with it, obviously. ISO 200 and uh, the shutter speed is like way up, it's about sort of 600 so um, obviously short handheld but I'll pop that on the screen now, let me know what you think in the comments. So where we are today in Derbyshire is part of the Limestone Way. It basically forms a, a big long line straight through the Peak District. Um, some good steep hills that we've just come down from the car park, uh, but some lovely scenes around. I'm going to see if I can find anything uh, of interest. Seems to be loads of wildlife out today as well, loads of birds around. I've seen quite a few butterflies as well, which is quite nice to uh, see this early in the year. But carry on walking, hopefully, we'll make our way down to uh, York or even uh, the River Bradford. But we'll see how far we get. Let's go take a wander. Hopefully you can hear me okay over the running water, but one of the reasons that we come down to the river is we want to play with some of the computational stuff on the OM-1. Uh, we've got a thing called Live ND, which is something that's been introduced on the uh, M1 Mark III, I think it was, uh, but really improved it a lot now. I actually do like an ND64, like equivalent to putting a six-stop ND filter on. So it's ideal for getting like the smooth water and stuff like that, so I'm going to give that a go. Uh, I'm going to keep on wandering down the river at the moment, but hopefully we'll find something that's uh, Ideal for it with a nice scene, but let's take a bit of a wander, see what we can see. So if you can hear me above the uh, the wind and the water noise, but I've just done a quick test shot with a live ND. Gone for the six stop, just to the test. And I'll put two shots up for you now. One without live ND and one with. See if you can see the difference. So how does Live ND work? Essentially, it's layering up multiple shots for you. So you line up, take your focus, hit the shutter, and basically all it'll do is actually sort of layer the shots on top of each other, which gives you the effect of having an ND filter on there. Um, you can vary the, uh, the amount of shots that it takes and let the time obviously with your shutter. It only works in manual mode, but that's not too much of a problem anyway, because you're going to be doing long exposures, you'll be in manual anyway. But I think the effects are quite nice. Obviously, where we are at the moment is quite busy as well. Um, the River Bradford is very similar to Lathgill Dale. Um, lots of sort of weird areas and uh, sort of managed water and stuff like that. But it's uh, quite nice for a quick test, which is what we're really aiming for. Another thing I've been testing as well is the high res shot. Um, now the camera's got two modes built in. It'll let you do a 50 megapixel single shot handheld. And it does that by just shifting the sensor around. Um, very clever the way it does it and you end up with uh, essentially a 50 megapixel shot and uh, doing a bit of pixel peeping yes it is clearer than the 20 mega megapixel shot so yeah it does de definitely work um, if you've got it on a tripod you can go mad and go to an 80 megapixel shot 
Uh, but I've not got tripod with us today, so I'm not going to try that one. But yeah, you can definitely see the difference in it. And the computational stuff is really fast as well. Literally, so if you take the high-res shot and it's like under half a second and you've got your shot straight out. So definitely a great feature that's included now. So the other question is, what do I think of the new 240mm uh, lens? Um, it's stunning. Crystal clear, stupidly fast to focus. And so far, it's not let me down at all. Focusing seems to be sharp. Never really seem to have any issues with it. Sort of missing focus. So yeah, absolutely spot on. Really nice part of it is the clutched uh, focus ring, which uh, I'll just show you that now. Basically, what it does, it allows you to flip straight into the manual override and sort of adjust the focus manually. Uh, really quite handy, actually. But uh, go to a really steep hill now. So, we'll be back in a minute. There's been quite a few YouTubers over the last few years and the Mark 4 Thirds is dead. Um, I think the release of the new OM-1 and the new Panasonic GX6 has really sort of put the room to bed. They've upped the game, they've given it a new lease of life, and frankly I think it's uh, one of the best systems out there. Certainly sort of compactness and ability, they're right up there with the best. One thing that's really handy, especially with these old dry stone walls, is get some lovely moss on them. Now, what I found is that the sections sort of just along this strip here, spinning around so you can see it, and essentially there's a mixture of different types of mosses sort of growing up at the top. So hopefully I'll go in with the pro lens, I'm not switching the macro. I'm going to drop the, uh, the aperture down to an f4, so it's going to give me not razor thin depth of field, but a thinner depth of field. So it'll look kind of a bit like a macro shot, but I'll pop it up now. Let me know what you think in the comments. So, what are my thoughts with the uh, new F2.8? 40mm lens. Um, home Systems have done a stunning job on it. Uh, really fast to focus, really clean focusing as well, really really smooth on the uh, the zoom ring to what you really need for it. Um, handy little feature, bit of pro lens, you've actually got a clutch for the manual focus. So you can be in auto focus mode, if you're not quite hitting it, pull it straight back, you're into full manual, it doesn't override, flip back, you're back into auto again. Really good setup, really nice to use. Not too heavy, you can tell it's a metal body, but you know, not too bad at all. Um, the shots that we're taking with it today, they've been absolutely crystal clear. I've had no problem at all with the uh, the lens coatings, everything seems to be really well controlled. Absolutely brilliant lens, but then again, it's pro lens, I'd expect it to be. Um, we've started to lose a bit of light now, it's gone really, really hazy, really harsh. So we're going to head back to the van now and uh, head back, but it's been an interesting test. Um, not just of the lens but of the camera as well with some of the extra features but really quite enjoyed the day out and unusual for a March t-shirt weather but yeah I'm going to take it I'm not going to turn that down at all but we'll leave you with the uh, the shots I've taken for today and uh, I'd say if you can hit the like button it really helps the channel out helps it to grow and uh, if there's any information you want about the OM1 drop us a comment below I'll see if I can answer any questions for you but as always thanks for watching we'll see you again soon